Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still uh, on engineering science N3, working on electricity. We have got the question that we are going to focus on, uh, that's uh, August 2017, question number seven, where we have got the first part of our question that was to state the difference between uh, the potential difference and the EMF. All right, so we've got two things here, the potential difference and the EMF of a cell. What is it that we understand about the, these two? All right, so you know that the potential difference is the reading when the current is flowing and the EMF refers to the reading when no current is flowing. That is uh, the difference between the potential difference and the EMF in this case. All right, so the other part of our question, now we are given the information that we are supposed to construct or to have a diagram from in this case. All right, so we're given um, a circuit consists of a battery of four cells. So take note, we have got uh, four cells which are connected in series in this case, each with an EMF of three volts an internal resistance of 0 0,2 ohms. All right, the battery is then connected to two external resistors of 6 ohms and 4 ohms connected in parallel, and two resistors are connected in series with a third resistor of 2 ohms. With a third resistor of 2 ohms. All right, so we're given that uh, the two resistors are connected in series with a third resistor. These two resistors that we are given, which are in parallel, later it's connected in series. We had a similar con condition like this from uh, the one of the question parts that I just did currently. But anyways, let us see what we have got here. Uh, we have got uh, four cells. They have got EMF of three connected in series. So let us... Uh, you have the total EMF of our of the battery in this case, which is going to be four times the number of uh, the drops that we are given, which is there are four of them. So we are going to there are the four, but each is having three volts. So meaning to say, we are going to obtain twelve volts in series. You multiply, meaning to say, we are supposed to get three plus three plus three four times. So you multiply by by four. All right, the resistance. Also, we are supposed to add, because it's in series, we are supposed to add 0, 0,2 four times. But to add 0, 0,2 four times, we simply multiply. So that will be our total uh, internal resistance. In this case, there are four resistors, each having a resistance of 0, 0,2 ohms. So this will give us 0, 0,8 ohms. All right. So meaning to say... We are going to have our battery in this case. I'm just going to have it as a combined part of our battery in this case, having our voltage source here. All right, depending with the diagram that you're going to have, how you're going to present it. All right, so just try to have a diagram which is uh, nicer here. I could just use a ruler, I have used a ruler. But anyways, so this is what we have. I'm just going to present this as a single battery now, which is uh, having uh, the EMF of 12 volts and the total internal resistance of uh, 0, 0,8 ohms. All right, so this is what we have from our diagram. Then we are given that the battery is then connected to two external resistors, six ohms and four ohms connected in parallel. All right, so this battery that we see is connected to two resistors which are in parallel. All right, so let's see. We are going to connect two resistors in parallel. So this is what you're going to have, the first resistor here and the other resistor like this in parallel. All right, so these are the two resistors which are being connected in parallel. We are given that this other one is 6 ohms and the other one is 4 ohms according to the uh, information. So you can say this is R1, this is R2. All right, so these are the two resistors which are being connected in parallel in this case. All right, let's check another part of our connection. After the two resistors, the six ohm and the four ohms in, in parallel, they, is, they, they, now, they are now saying, and the two resistors, which are these two resistors, are connected in series with a third resistor. There's a third resistor of two ohms connected in series. So we are going to combine this parallel combination with a series resistor. 
all right so this is what we are going to have at the end all right so that is how our diagram is going to be like so this is our r3 having a resistance of uh, two ohms in this case so uh the diagram that we have got here is the one that we are going to apply to attempt whatever question that you are given it's best for us to use the diagram all right so let us check what you're given the first part of our question is to calculate the following the total resistance of the circuit and that is uh two marks for that on 7.21 the total resistance of the circuit all right so how can we have the total resistance from our circuit in this case so uh that is our question 7.21 so from this part we've got two resistors in parallel and a series resistor. so we're going to have our total resistance we've got uh two resistors in parallel so we're going to find rp plus this resistor in series and also we've got the internal resistance of RRT. So the total resistance for the uh, total uh, internal resistance, we must be considered it's in series also. So meaning to say we are going to find uh, RRP from product over sum. So remember this is product over sum, which is going to be R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So meaning to say, we can be able to calculate for the parallel combination. So RRT is going to be, for the parallel part, we said we've got six and four. So that is going to be six times four, the product over the sum six plus four, plus RS, which is the R2 in this case, our R2, that is two ohms, plus RRT, which is the total internal resistance of 0 0.8. All right, so this is what you're going to have uh for the parallel combination if you use your product over sum you can have this one for the parallel combination which is going to be 2,4 so that's 2,4 plus 2 plus 0, 0,8 all right so if we add everything that is going to give us the total resistance in this case of 5,2 ohms so this is how you work out the total resistance depending with the circuit that you are given here we had a parallel connection and a series and also the internal resistance in a series again so we're going to add that one to the to all the resistors then the current flowing in the circuit so when they say uh, current flowing in the circuit they are referring to the total current that is affecting the whole circuit in this case all right so what is going to be our total current we have got the total emf for the for the battery in this case and the total resistance so meaning to say we can be able to calculate our total current meaning to say our total current being e over the total resistance in this case so meaning to say our total current is going to be the emf of the battery of 12 volts divided to the total resistance our total resistance which is 5,2 so this is going to give us uh the total current in this case so that's uh 12 divide by 5,2, which is going to give us something like 2,30769 and so on and so on. So if you round off to three decimal places, that will be 2,308. The six is going to change seven into eight. That is measured in amps. All right, so this is our total current of the circuit in this case. Uh, then from the total current or from the everything we are asked to calculate the potential difference of the parallel circuit the, the 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 voltage that is the potential difference of the parallel circuit all right so this is where we are having our parallel circuit in this case remembering that uh the total current we have got the total current in this case so we are going to consider this on our diagram the total current flowing from the positive terminal uh, in this way is uh, 2,308. So this current is the one that is going to affect our parallel combination. This is where we have our parallel combination in this case. So what we need from this parallel combination is the total resistance of these two resistors, which is our RRP. And our RRP, we calculated this from product over sum, and we got our RRP as 2,4. So we have the resistance of the parallel combination which is 2,4 so meaning to say we can be able to calculate the voltage across uh the parallel connection in this case all right so our 7.23 uh the voltage across the parallel connection is going to be the total current 
times the resistance affecting the parallel combination. All right, so that's it. The total current is the one that is going to flow throughout this part. That is why we are using the total current, which is 2,308 times the total resistance for the parallel connection, which we said it's uh, 2,4 ohms in this case. So we are going to multiply to 2,4 ohms. All right, so that's uh, the voltage of the parallel connection, which is going to give us something like 5,5392 uh, volts. All right, so to three decimal places, we are going to have our VP to three decimal places as 5,5. Uh, three nine volts. All right, so that is what you're going to have at the end. All right, so this is how we could have calculated our parallel voltage or the potential difference for the parallel circuit. All right, so that was only part of our information. All right, so let's check on 7.3. We are given now another information that is uh, calculate the cost. All right, so we need to calculate the cost in this case to run a washing machine of 230 volts. So here we are given the voltage of 230 volts, the current given at uh, 20 amps, and we are given for one hour, which is the time. So our time in this case is one hour. If the price of electricity, which is the cost per kilowatt hour, so we are given the cost uh per kilowatt hour that is the cost per kilowatt hour in this case which is given as 80 uh 85 cents that's 85 cents per kilowatt hour all right so remember what i said guys it's easier for you to calculate the cost price or the price that you want to have or the cost from the power that you're given because here they give you a cost which is affected per kilo which means each kilowatt hour that we have, it's costing 85 cents. So in order for us to have the total cost, you simply multiply the cost that you have per kilowatt hour, which is the cost that you are given per kilowatt hour times the kilowatt hour, which means we are going to multiply to our power, but in kilowatt hour. So we are simply going to multiply these two, the kilowatt hour and the cost per kilowatt. Already we have got the cost per kilowatt in this case. We do not have the kilowatt hour. This is what we do not have. So what are we going to do? Kilowatt hour mean, meaning to say power per time in hours. This is power times time in hours. Kilowatt hour, power in kilowatts times the time in hours. So that's how you, con that's how you find the kilowatt hour. All right, so what we are going to do is kilowatt hour we are simply talking about power in kilowatts this is supposed to be a power in kilowatts times the time in hours all right so let us save our power what are we going to do for power you use what you are given here we have got voltage and current so remember voltage times current we are going to have power so we're going to multiply uh, voltage times current in this case to obtain the power. So that means we multiply voltage and current, our voltage being 230 times the current being 20 in this case. All right, so if you multiply these two, we are obtaining power. So then you multiply kilowatt hour now. So you multiply by the hours that you're given. So our hours in this case, is uh given as uh that is our time is which is one hour so our time in this case is one hour this is our time in one which is one hour all right so if you multiply these two you're going to obtain 230 times 20 which is going to give us 4600 so 4600 is in watts meaning to say we are having this in watts time in hours which means times our time in hours in this case, which is one hour. All right. So we still have to find our kilowatt hour in this case. Okay, let me write this properly. This is a kilowatt hour, kilowatt hour. So now we are going to obtain this converted to kilowatts so that we can obtain kilowatt hour. So you convert your power to watts. If you convert your power to kilowatts, you divide by a thousand, that is going to be 4,6 kilowatts.
times the time in hours, which is one hour. So if we multiply 4,6 times one hour, this is going to be 4,6 kilowatt hour. All right, so this is what you're going to have in this case. So like I said, in order for you now to obtain the cost, it's the cost per kilowatt hour, which is our cost per kilowatt hour, which is 85 cents. Multiply by the number of kilowatt hour that we are given, and we are given the number of kilowatt hour that we are given in this case is uh, 4,6. That's 4,6 kilowatt hour. So you multiply to 4,6. This is going to give you a cost just like that. So this is going to give us 391 cents. So if we convert to rent, divide by 100, this is going to be uh, 3 comma, that will be 3,91 rent in this case. All right, so this is how we can calculate the cost uh, that is you work with the kilowatt hour. All right, so that was our question, 7.3 in this case, all right? Then 7.4, we are asked to choose, all right, let us check what we have here. Choose the correct word from those in brackets, right? Only the word or words next to the question number 7.4 all right the ratio of the actual power to the apparent power is all right so we need to know what is the ratio that affects the actual power to the apparent power remember from our power triangle uh remember from our power triangle where we have got uh, something like this all right where we have got our angle theta in this case and uh, this is our apparent power, which is given as a VI, which is our apparent apparent power in this case. This being our true power. So this is S and this is Q. So we need, what the question is the ratio of actual power, which is a P to the, uh, to the given uh, part, which is uh, the apparent power. In this case, apparent power. All right, so what is going to be the ratio? So we know that uh, from this ratio, we are going to have the power, the actual power, which is given as uh, VI cos theta. Okay, let me have it uh, this way. Is it where I'm supposed to have the actual power? It's supposed to be on this part. Sorry for this. This is supposed to be here. All right, this is our theta. This is going to be VI cos of theta. That's cos of theta here. VI sine of theta. All right, sorry for that. This is just our VI. All right, so this is what we are having in this case, our true power here. This is our true power. Uh, this is our apparent and this is our reactive. All right, so the question is uh, what do we have on the ratio. If you are to use this part or if you are to use our ratio as it is given, uh, let's see what you're going to have. True power which is given as a VI cos theta. So this is VI cos theta over the apparent power, which is VI. So this is VI. So if you check this, this is going to give us cos theta. And cos theta, what does cos of theta represents? The cos of theta, this is our power factor. Remember that power factor is equal to the cosine of theta. So if you divide uh, the, the actual power, to the apparent power, what you obtain is the power factor, which is cosine theta. That is how uh, we are supposed to attempt this typical question. All right, so that's what we had, guys. Uh, all you need is to revise as much questions as we can, and also to revise also your power triangle from your uh, elect electrical uh, trade theory there. You think we have got something that we can consider on our power triangle that can actually help us. Okay, anyways, that's it, guys, from Amazon African Motives. Till we meet again.